what the uh, the model to do is actually be able to store the photos directly in MongoDB. Uh, like Ian mentioned, um, MongoDB has this really awesome protocol called GridFS, where normally in a relational database it would be a really, really stupid idea to store a bunch of file system blob data in a database. Mongo makes this really easy and intuitive. Um, Mongo has a particular convention for uh, GridFS tables. Um, and we have to tell it to use that, and it's called fs.files by default. So we'll tell the, uh, the photo model to use that uh, collection. So let's see if it actually works. So we can route to this controller by going to photos, and we see an error because there's no actual template. Uh, the view, or the index action rather, is happening, but it has nothing to render. So we'll start by creating an index template. Do you ever notice how you can never type when other people are watching you? <laughs> um, OK, so hi. So now, this doesn't really do anything. So what we'll say for now is if uh, not count photos. So if there aren't any photos present, then say no photos. And then create a link. It says add one. And that will go to photos in the add action. So here we are. Yeah, proper punctuation. Now we can add a photo. Again, no template. So here we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to create um, where this template would normally be called add, we're going to actually create an edit template because edit and add can share the same code. And we'll start by creating a new form with, um, so you can see here in add, if we're not submitting any data, it'll still create a new instance of um, the photo object. And that gets passed down here to the template. So we have this photo object available here. And we're going to use it to create a form. And the form is going to be file type, since we want to enable uploads. So we'll start by giving this a few fields, like title, uh, description, and, uh, and then finally, file. So um, Mongo, or Lithium, rather, has had built-in support for MongoDB since pretty much the beginning. And just recently, we added support for uh, GridFS. And it's really pretty seamless. And one of the things to remember, the kind of magical conventions, is if you have a GridFS-based uh, model, the, um, it can only have one, each document can only have one file embedded. Um, so we just call that file. So anytime you have a file, you just call it file. And, it, and uh, the Mongo adapter handles uploading the file to um, Mongo's GridFS automatically. So we're going to call that file and then uh, have a submit button, save. So we now have our form. Oh, and we haven't actually told the add action to use that template yet. So we'll say render template equals edit. And we have a template. So Pretty basic form. Um, we'll choose from a little collection of photos. Just pulled a few out of uh, yield archive. Um, so there's, oh, I've got one of me um, drinking something in uh, the Virgin <laughs> Islands. So we'll start with that one. Peach. And um, give it some goofy description, and save. Oh, so now we've encountered our first error. And this is actually because um, the IDs that the template generates by default are don't have underscores, and MongoDB's native IDs have start with underscores. So we'll just change that really quickly. And I'm just going to review my notes and cheat. Um, and then that should be it. So we'll try that again. Choosing file, 
and then we'll save that. Hmm. Maybe I missed an ID. That's not that one. Ah, yes, okay, so the next thing to note, by default, um, lithium ships with some uh, default routing. That's what lets us say slash photos slash view and have that automatically map to um, like the view action of the photos controller, for example. So this routes file is in your uh, config directory of your application. And it has these default routes here. By default, the IDs that it matches are only numeric. Whereas Mongo has 24-bit uh, hex IDs. So we actually want to change this to say match 24 characters of 0 through 9 and A through F instead of the standard issue. So now when we try and route to this, okay, so we're getting a new exception finally. We don't have a view template. So we'll go ahead and add that. Just add a few details. Again, this uh, photo object is made available here. We're grabbing the photo by ID, the ID that's being passed into the request and just passing it directly to the, the template. Is this all sort of clear, more or less, what's going on here? OK, awesome. So we'll go to the description, take a look and make sure that, that works. OK, so we've got that basic functionality working. Now we actually want to be able to display the image. So how are we going to do that? Um, lithium has some sort of middle, uh, a middle tier that sits between the controller and the thing that renders the templates to allow you to swap out the default template rendering setup that just calls a file like uh, view.html.php and renders that. So you can actually render from the same controller action different types of content. So here, what we want to do is say, go to the exact same URL that we're at now with uh, the same photo ID and tack on a .jpg and have that actually render our image out of GridFS. And we'll say this is photo title. So that's broken because we haven't actually told it what to do yet. So one of our bootstrap files is called media. And this provides some uh, default functionality for doing different things with uh, media files being loaded through the framework. So the first thing to do is actually make it so that this file is included in the default uh, bootstrapping process. And then we can go in and add to uh, the media class, which kind of brokers uh, the different media types. Uh, we can give it a new type to recognize called JPEG. And that's going to be obviously image JPEG. And then we can give it some settings. Uh, first, we want to tell it not to cast, not to automatically cast our objects to arrays. So, for example, if we wanted to say uh, serialize our photo as JSON uh, to create a, uh, a web service, um, we could do that really easily. It just uh, serializes or converts all the objects to arrays and passes that to PHP's native JSON encode function, which will automatically spit out JSON for whatever you give it. So here we don't want to do that. We will actually want access to the, uh, the native object. And we're actually going to give it an encode function. Um, and that function is going to actually grab the data and do what we want to do with it. So we're just going to take a look at what that dumps out by just going like that. So if we actually go to uh, photos view slash this ID slash or dot JPEG, we actually see this uh, document structure um, that Lithium wraps uh, Mongo's documents in so that you, you can actually interact with them. Um, so we have this photo here, and it is a document. And so we want to be able to say return the photo, and it has a file property re we remember from before by convention. And file is actually an instance of a Mongo GridFS doc or document object and it has a method called getBytes. So we'll just return the result of uh, the bytes that we state, saved previously in MongoDB, and that should give us a photo. So now when we go back here and refresh, 
this is kind of gigantic, but there's me on uh, St. Thomas. So does everybody kind of understand what happened there? So that's just about all it takes to, um, to use GridFS in Lithium and MongoDB, and all it takes to serve, serve up images. So one of the drawbacks of, of what we're actually doing here is that the framework still has to go through the entire default dispatch cycle to, to get here. So it's still processing all the routes. It's still um, going through all the controller and everything. So to serve uh, media assets, instead we want it to be like really, really fast and efficient. Um, so we want to bypass as much of that as possible. So we're going to go back to our broken setup and implement that in a slightly different way. So we're going to come back here to um, the router. We're actually going to connect a route that looks like photos slash view slash uh, ID. And we want to have the same exact um, parameter set up and dot JPEG and we have no default parameters and so for this we're actually going to define a function that's going to take in the request uh, directly. So we'll just take a look at what the request looks like uh, here. So we'll go back to trying to serve our image and hopefully that gives us what we want. Okay so here's the request object we see the URL that's being intercepted. Um, so now we can take this and say, okay, up at the top, we're going to use uh, app models. We're going to use our photo model. Can I stop you with a question? Yeah. The function as a lambda function? Yeah. Cool. Five special. Five, uh, three, five three. Yep, yep, that's right. So we're actually assigning um, the lambda as a handler to that route. So we're saying if this route matches, just execute this, completely bypass the rest of the framework. So what we're going to say is um, we also want to use uh, with the um, action response. So instead of going through the entire framework dispatch cycle, we're just going to grab it directly and return a new response object. And that response is responsible for a couple of things. First, it needs a body. So we can say photo, find, or first rather. Um, request ID, and so this ID property is coming directly from the route, this uh, thing that was matched here. So we'll tell it what to find, and then we can actually chain straight off of this and say, give me the file and the bytes on that file. Now, obviously, I'm doing no error checking or, or whatever, but just for the sake of expediency. And then I'll say headers, content type, image.